of like in a way of an introduction, I'm just really, um, I guess the Old Testament is really my favorite. And some of the most favorite and amazing stories in the Bible are found in the Old Testament. And how many of you like the, the supernatural, the stories of the miracles and God just doing things, coming on the scene, you know, he's the miracle worker, the promise keeper. Um, he's the light in the darkness. You know, sometimes when we're in a position where we, we don't know up from down, right from left. You know, in my years, there have been a few times where I found myself in some of those spots. And um, he's never left me yet. And he's promised me he'd never leave me, nor would he ever forsake me. And um, I'm 62 years old, and I've not, that's not been, that's been the case. He's never left me. You know, I've had, I've had friends and people, family, that would leave you high and dry, right? Y'all ever experienced any of that? But he's never left me. He's never forsaken me. Uh, he's always been a promise keeper, light in the darkness. And I think that's why I so much enjoy seeing some of these stories like uh, Joshua, Joshua chapter 6. Stories of a supernatural God doing supernatural things in the presence of his people. I just want to stand back and watch him work. I want to see what he has next. And in the midst of that, he's bringing glory to himself and victory to his people. How many of you need victory? I'm just going to be honest with you. I need some victory in my life. I, I need some victory. I need to be going down the road singing victory in Jesus. And I guess um, these are stories of God showing up and showing himself to his people in an unbelievable way. I think that's what I like about being a Jesus follower because a lot of times when, when he shows up, it's in an unbelievable way. It's hard to believe. If you didn't believe in the supernatural, if you didn't believe that he's who he says he is, the way maker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness, if you didn't believe that that's who he was, then you wouldn't believe that what happened just happened. And that's kind of how it is with this story we're going to look at today. And I, I want to go back in my mind and take you with me for just a second. There was a song that we used to sing in the church years ago. And here's the chorus. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Y'all remember that one? If you've ever been, if you were in church over the past 40 or 50 years, you probably heard that one before. Um, because it was pretty much a staple where I grew up. You heard that about every Sunday. I wonder why that was. I guess even back in those days, people needed victory in Jesus, didn't they? So I guess the world hadn't, you know, you know the saying, the more things change, the more they stay the same. I think that's a true story. But here in Joshua chapter 6, the Israelites find themselves in a spot. You ever find yourself in a spot? A position, in a hard place. And many times, God defended them, he delivered them, he provided for them, time after time. You, you, all you have to do is read the accounts. You know, what happened? <clears throat> and God showed up time after time. So, some of us, many of us, I would even dare to say that most of us, are probably in a place where we need to see God show up. Now, it's probably for all different kinds of reasons. We all have our issues, right? <clears throat> I just want to 
pause for just a second and say, yeah, I, I stand up here in front of you on Sunday morning and, and I try to look good and smell good and those things on Sunday morning. But you know, and, and people, sometimes people have the wrong idea about pastors. Some people think that pastors don't have any issues. They don't have any problems in their lives. They don't have any concerns. Some people think that, you know, um, there's no family issues. There's no marital issues. Everything just goes along as, you know, smooth and silky every day. And I think one of the reasons why is because we as pastors have led our people to believe that. Like, I don't do anything wrong. I don't have any issues in my life. Well, I want you to know, and I always try to be transparent, I'm just like you are. My feelings get hurt just like you do. I get angry just like you do. Um, so pretty much if, if you have experienced something or are experiencing something, I'm no different. And, and that's what I try to be transparent. I try to be the kind of person where a, you could come to me and think that I, I'm not somebody that's, not, that's unapproachable. I'm not somebody who's perfect. I put my pants on the same way. Well, I don't know. Some of, how many of you sit down and put two legs in one? I don't do that. So, so I put my pants on the same way that some of y'all do. Um, and I don't put my shoes on first. So I, I just, I don't really know why I felt that I needed to say, but I'm, I want you to know that I'm human just like you are. And the Israelites were the same. They, you know, those people, even though they were the chosen people of God, those people messed up time after time after time. We see they, they would go do things and God would have to deliver them. He might even have to give them a spanking. You know, send somebody in that they, they'd live under uh, slavery and, and all kinds of things happened to them. But then God would, he would hear them cry and he would say, my people need deliverance. And so... This is kind of a this is kind of a point where God's people needed to see victory. And so Joshua chapter 6, the Israelites are on their quest to take the land of the promise. Do you remember that? God promised them that he, the promised land. But there's a little issue that came up on a place called Jericho. Now, Jericho was an ancient city. It was, it was there long before Joshua. The Canaanites considered Jericho invincible. They thought that that was, you know, it was Fort Knox, but nobody could penetrate it. It was, it was a military city, and they thought that it was, that was it. It was a symbol of military not, uh, might for the Canaanites. It had fortified walls. This, and this is kind of hard for me to, to believe or understand how, how this could be back in those days. But the entire city was surrounded by a fortified wall. And in some places, the wall was 25 feet tall. That's pretty high for, for those days, don't you think? And here's 20 feet thick. I mean, from outside to inside of the wall, 20 feet. <clears throat> Soldiers standing on top of that wall could see any enemy that was coming for miles. And the Israelites got victory. How? How did that ever happen? How did it ever take place? How is it possible that that could happen? Well... They were dealing with the way maker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness. That's, that's how it happened. So let's look just a little bit closer. If you found your place there in Joshua chapter 6, I'm going to read one verse and then we're going to go back and, and pick through this. And we may not, I don't know if we'll finish this today or not, maybe we will. Joshua chapter 6, verse 5 says, And it came to pass that when they made a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear 
the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Now, who believes, how many of you, I want to show of hand, how, how many of you believe that the victory is in Jesus? Do you believe that? Do you really believe that? Um, it's, and you know, sometimes for me, it's easy for me to say, and, and one of the reasons why we can say that is because we've already made up our mind that no matter what, I hope you've made up your mind, no matter what, the Israelites, in more than one situation, were in a, they were in a pinch, they were in a hard spot, you know, between the devil and the deep blue sea, you know, so to speak, I think that's where that, Maybe, uh, maybe they're the ones that coined that phrase. You know, in a, in a, in a position where if victory is going to come, it's not going to come through me. It was not going to come through them. They couldn't do it themselves. And, it, you know, like I said, the more things change, the more they stay the same. But the victory is not in me. The victory is in Jesus. So we believe that the victory is in Jesus and not in ourselves. He's already won the victory. God's plan for us is victory. It's not defeat. Did you hear what I said? God's plan for us is not defeat. God's plan is victory. He, he plans for us to be victorious. As a matter of fact, we are victorious. We may not be able to see it today, we may not see it right now, but we are victorious whether we know it or not. So, victory in five parts. I got, I've kind of broken this thing down into five little <laughs> sections. So how is the victory? How, how is it that the victory came for, for the Israelites? How is it that victory will come for us? Well, don't close your Bibles up because we're going to be we're going to be reading there in Joshua chapter six. Go back to verse number one. It says, "Now Jericho was straightly shut up because the children of Israel, because of the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. And the Lord said, "Now, right there is a really important thing." We need to pay close attention to how verse number two begins. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thy hand, thine hand, Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Wow. Didn't look like it, did it? If you were one of the Israelites and you were and, and you're your job was to take that city and there's a wall 25 feet tall and 20 feet thick and all the mighty men of valor and the king and all those people are inside there and God has said, I've given it to you and they're standing there scratching their heads saying, how? <laughs> it doesn't look to me like you've given us anything. We're standing on the outside of this wall. They're on the inside. How do we get there? Well, and you may or may not think this is noteworthy, but here's, here's the outline. Listen to the Word of God. Verses 1 and 2 tells us that we need to listen to the Word of God. Now, because um, verse number 2, and the Lord said, and the Lord said, do we really care what the Lord said? Do you? Now, this is not something I'm going to ask you to raise your hand and wave at me on, but do you really care what the Lord said? Do I really care what the Lord said? Because I'm standing on the outside of the wall, and I'm looking at the wall, and it's 20 feet, 25 feet tall and 20, 20 feet thick, and I'm like, Lord, are you sure? <laughs> you know, and, and, and you can only imagine, a, a, you know, quite a few things are going through my mind as I'm standing here just where we are. You know, we're, we're inside some walls right here. 
And, and I think it was the work of God that made us be able to be here. And God's saying, you got the victory. And I'm saying, how? Where's the victory? Well, first of all, we listen to the word of God. And we really need to care what he says. Do we truly listen to what he says? You know, I read the Bible all the time. And a lot of times I hold it in my hand, and, it, and it's God's word. But in my heart, I'm not thinking, I'm just, you know, it's a book. It's an old book. It's an ancient book. And I don't always, as I'm reading this book, think this is God's word, and it's important, and I need to really listen to what it says. I need to take to heart what it says. Well, Joshua chapter 6 is something that we need to listen to, something that we can base our lives around. Do you believe that? Do you believe what God has given us? Do I believe what God has given us? Well, we need to listen to the word of God, and I believe that no, if there's no listen, there's no victory. Yeah, I believe that God can do whatever he wants to. I, I remember years ago, I, has any of you, has any of your, um, has your, any of you had your theology changed maybe over the years? Like you, and some of you are going to say, well, theology don't change. It's either right or it's wrong. Well, I remember years ago, <clears throat> I actually made the statement that I don't believe that God hears a prayer from a, from a lost person except for God saved me, I'm a sinner. I've actually said that. I believe that. I thought that. Well, I don't know what God hears. Right? I'm not God. So you, we need to be careful what, you know, how our theology lines up with what God says. <clears throat> and number one is that we need to listen to the word of God and believe what it says. And if we're not willing to listen, then we're not likely to have the victory. <clears throat> But we might. You know, God might just work a miracle just so we can see it. I don't know. But I think that we're not likely, if we don't listen to God's word, if we're not listening, then we're likely to get deeper in trouble. We're not likely to see the victory. So, <clears throat> verses 1 and 2, victory in five parts. Number one is that we need to listen to God's word. I need to listen to God's word. Take it to heart. Believe it. Even though sometimes it doesn't look like what I want it to. I've said this before. I say it all the time. Every time I, I, every time I read this book, it offends me. It does. It, it, it offends me because it's almost like looking in a mirror and I see how ugly I am. I look in this and I see how sinful and how out of God's will and how unbelieving I am. Right? Right? So, we need to listen. The first part is to listen. Second part, there in verse number two, it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Learn the will of God. See, see, he says, see, I have given. <clears throat> You know what the miraculous thing about this is? You would think if the Israelites were going to go take this city, they'd be coming with swords and spears and bows and arrows and AK-47s and jet airplanes and helicopters and Black Hawks and whatever they, you know, whatever they could get. You would think, but no, none of that. None of, none of that. Right? Have you, I read this story before, right? You know, you know where this is going. So, listen to the word of God. Learn the will of God. See, I have given. I have given. Jericho, a walled city, impossible to penetrate. It's a God-sized event. Not anything that the people are going to be able to pull off on their own. They could have brought tanks. They could have brought whatever they had. Camels. Donkeys, mules, horses, <laughs> whatever they had. This was a God-sized assignment. They didn't have anything that was going to touch it. And I'm going to 
honest with you. That's kind of how I feel right now. There, there's, I don't have, I don't, you know, I have nothing. I have nothing. Don't know what to say. Don't know what to think. Don't hardly know how to act. I know that God gave me an assignment. And I'm not going to say that I always listen to what he says. And I've definitely, definitely not learned everything there is to learn from this book. And from living my life with him. But Jericho was impossible to penetrate. The army's inside. The king's inside. But he says, I have given you your promise. I've given you your Jericho. Now, I, I would say, what victory? You know, where's the beat? Y'all don't have to remember that. <laughs> where's the victory? Where is it? Victory is God's plan for his people. Victory. 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 Not defeat. And that comes by the first part, listening to God's word, learning the will of God. You know what? I think over the years of me trying to, trying to be a Jesus follower, that's been one of the hardest things. I don't take time to learn what the will of God is. I get goal-oriented, you know, the blinders, and we just, I'm just like, there's the finish line, we're going to it. Most of the time when we sit out on the race, we don't plan for there to be detours, do we? You know, sometimes we run up on a roadblock. There's no way to jump over it, there's no way to get through it, there's no way to go around it. It's just there. And, you know, it's pretty easy. It, it would be easy just to turn around and go back, wouldn't it? Right. Say, there's no way. <coughs> you know, that's kind of like the Israelites at the Red Sea. Except they couldn't turn around. Mm -hmm. They couldn't turn around if they wanted to. There was death either way. There, it was impossible either way. So, learning what God's will is. But I'm not done yet. This actually gets a little bit harder, I think. It, the farther we go, the, the more difficult, I think. Um, part number three. Let's look at verse number three. And you, shall, and you shall compass the city, all you men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. And there, about right there, I'll be saying, Seriously, God. Really? You expect that's that's the plan? That's pretty that's pretty weak. That's all you got. That's just me. Now I know you wouldn't say that to God. Right? None of y'all would none of y'all would even think that, much less say it. Thus shalt thou do for six days, verse four. And seven priests shall bear the four. The ark, seven trumpets of ram's horns, and the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Man. That sounds like a plan. It is a plan. I'll be honest with you. If I were those Israelites, I'd be saying, God, that ain't a very good plan. You're going to have to come up with something better than that. Um, so the third part is to love the way of the Lord. Thou shalt, this shalt thou do. And if we don't love it, we're not going to do it. Most of the time. If we
we've walked with him long enough, we might say, okay, God, you haven't let me down yet. This sounds like, this sounds like an ambush waiting to happen. This sounds like there is no possible way that this can work. But because you are who you are, we'll give it a try. We may or may not say that. I don't know. We might say, ain't no way. Ain't doing it. Love the way of the Lord. March, carry the ark, blow horns, shout. Shout at the enemy. I'm sure they're all going to fall over with heart attacks. They're going to die just because we said boo at them. Right? <laughs> March, carry the ark, blow the horn, shout. The walls will fall down, take the city. And the battle plan sounds crazy to me. It's ridiculous. Strange, but we gotta love it, right? You gotta love it. That's what makes it so awesome, isn't it? Because it's crazy. It's crazy. Do you know that when when God has done the most awesome things in my life, it's, it's those times when I've stood back and said, "God, this is crazy." You ever told Him that before? I just tell Him, "It's crazy. I'm done." Stick a fork in it. Matter of fact, it's burnt. <laughs> so, love the way. Love the way of the Lord. Even when the battle plan sounds crazy. Even when it's ridiculous. Even when it's strange. Then look with me in verse number six. <clears throat> and Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark, before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people. That seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed him, followed them. And the armed men went down to the priests that blew with the ark with the trumpets, and, and the rearward came after the ark, the priests going on and blowing with the trumpets. Now I'm not going to read all that. I'm going to skip, let's skip down to um, verse number 15. That's your homework assignment. Go back and read this whole chapter. Um, not saying it's not important. I'm just saying I don't know that I got time to, to discuss every single part of it. I would like to finish today. Yeah, we probably will. Verse 15 says, And it came to pass on the seventh day. Now, if you remember, back over here on, um, on verse 3, it says, You used to. And you shall compass the city, all ye men of, men of war, and go around about the, the city once. Thus shalt thou do six days. Now in verse 15, there's been some days gone by. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And verse 16, and it came to pass... At the seventh time, when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city. The Lord hath given you the city. And the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are within, that are therein. To the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And ye, in any, like, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you make yourselves accursed. When you take the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel accursed, and trouble it, but all the silver and gold, and vessels of brass and iron, 
are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Now that was verses 15 through 19. So live the wishes of the Lord. Do, do you remember the, the just do it thing? Just do it. That's why God said to the Israelites, just do it. Just go ahead and do it. Well, I think there's a big parallel between the Israelites and us Christianites. Jesusites. I, I say all the time I don't really like the word Christian because that means a whole lot of different things to different people. But Jesus follower, you know, it's not, it'd be kind of hard to not understand that. If I'm following Jesus, then I'm following Jesus. He's the one that I'm following. Some people think that you can follow grandma and be a Christian. You can follow the preacher and be a Christian. That's not the case. And I want to go on record and say that. It's a personal relationship between us and him. It has nothing to do with grandma or how often she went to church or any of that. But a Jesus follower is one who follows Jesus. Okay? So, live the wishes of the Lord. Just do it. His, his wishes seem strange to us sometimes. His ways are above our ways. We don't understand what he's doing all the time. Follow his wishes. Go with God day by day, step by step. <clears throat> the Israelites did what he said. You know, it took days. They went and marched around, went and marched around, and went and marched around, and they, then they went and marched around seven times, and then, you know, they blew horns and shouted. And so, live the wishes of the Lord. Follow his wishes. We, we may not see how it works. We may not understand it. As a matter of fact, we may totally misunderstand. But at the same time, he knows what he's doing. Live the wishes of the Lord. I have uh, one more verse. Joshua chapter 6, verse 20. It says, So the people shouted when the priests blew the trumpets, and it came to pass. When the people heard the sound of the trumpets and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Look for the victory. I'm looking for the city. I'm looking for the victory. And I'm, I'm inviting you to do the same thing. Look. Look for the victory. The wall fell flat. I, I like to ask a lot of questions, don't I? Do y'all believe this? Do you believe this happened? Yes. Yes. I, don't, I don't understand how it happened. Well, I do understand, but not, it was not, it was not a natural thing. I mean, unless those walls were about to fall down anyway, and unless there was a supersonic boom or an earthquake, right? How is it even possible? And how did it happen right when God said it was going to? Blow the trumpets. Shout. It's most of the time it's about God's timing. I think if they had tried this on the sixth day or the first day, if they would have said, God, what's all this hoopla about day, six day, four day, whatever day, and then seventh day, seven times, blow, shout, what is all this stuff? Isn't that, isn't that about, I'm impatient. I am an impatient person. I want it to happen now. Not next week, not after seven times.
Anybody else like that? Sometimes if we look for the picture before it's God's time, we're not going to see it. How is such a thing possible? Well, I don't know. But I'm just going to tell you, yes, I do believe it. I believe it happened. I can't explain it other than to say that it's supernatural. God did it. The God that created it all. The God that created this ball that we live on that spins. He created each one of us in his image, in his likeness. He's the one that did it. And he's the one that's still doing it. He's the one that's bringing the victory. How is such a thing possible? I don't know. Except to say that he did it. Joshua listened to God's words. He learned the will of God. He loved the ways of God. And he lived the wishes of God. The end result of following God's plan is victory. It's victory. It's not defeat. It's victory over our walls, over our obstacles, over our problems. Now, I'd be uh, misleading you if I stood here this morning and said, I know exactly what God's going to do, because I don't. And you might say, well, you're the preacher. God didn't tell you? <laughs> I told you I'm just like you. Maybe he told you. He might have told you before he told me. Did you know that happens? Sometimes God speaks to his people. It doesn't have to be, didn't have to be Joshua. Don't have to be me. And sometimes God just speaks to us as individuals for what we need to know. You already knew that though, right? So I'm looking for the victory. I'm waiting to see the victory. For the Israelites, the walls fell flat. Now maybe we should go out here and march seven times around the shopping center. <laughs> I don't know. I felt like doing that. I guess that's a confession, right? <laughs> well, in the long run, I don't really want the shopping center to fall down, do you? No, I don't. I just want the victory. You know, um, there's not a lot of good, I used to say this about TV, but we'll talk about Facebook. People, people see more on Facebook than they do on TV anymore, right? I saw, there's a t-shirt on there I saw the other day that said, normal's not coming back, but Jesus is. And you know, that might be what's going to happen. That might be the victory. I've thought about that. You know, this might be it. <clears throat> that wouldn't be a bad thing either, would it? That'd be victory. That'd be complete and total victory. So, but I don't know when that's going to happen. And neither does anybody else. It just can. So, let's keep looking for the victory. And I think if we keep looking for it, we're going to see it. Just like the Israelites did. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, just as surely as the Israelites were your chosen people. Lord, you brought them through many, many close spots. You fed them with manna. 
You led them with lights in the day and in the night. You provided water. Lord, you even, you even allowed their clothes to last and not wear out. You did many, many things. Miraculous things. And so, Lord, we're, we're engrafted. We're Jesus followers. We've been engrafted into your family. And so today, we just want to stand back and watch you work. Lord, give us your plan. Show me your will. Help us to love your word. Help us to follow exactly what you would have us do. I don't want to do anything different than what, you would, what your plan is. I want to be a part of your plan. This is one time I don't want to be a rebel. I don't want to do things different than what you want us to. And I pray, God, that we would do exactly as you say. If it would be march and walk and blow horns and shout, whatever it might be. So, Lord, today I pray, you know, this, this message might have a lot of different meanings for different people. And there's probably people sitting in this building today that's looking for a good fit of a different kind. And I don't pretend to know what everybody's needs are in this place, but I know that your Holy Spirit does. And so, Lord, in just a minute, we're going to have our closing song and a time to reflect on life and just to think about who you are. And I pray, God, that not one single person will walk out of this building today feeling defeated. But that we'll walk out of here looking for the victory. Lord, we know that you are victorious. There's, there's no defeat in you. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to follow you closely. And so, Lord, now speak to us in these last few minutes of this, of this time that we have together today. Lord, we're looking for your revelation and for your victory. In Jesus' name we pray.